Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here. It's the new year. Everything is kind of fresh and shiny and new. I know a lot of people have set New Year's resolutions and a lot of people have not. Um, yes, a lot of times we don't stick to our goals. Actually, probably most of the time we don't stick to our goals. But I will say that the new year presents an opportunity. Sure, you can just start a new habit any day you want, but I kind of like the idea of turning a fresh page. It's a new year, new date, 2021. We're ready, let's go. But I think that saying I'm gonna set these sort of resolutions, like I'm gonna wake up earlier, or I'm gonna lose weight, and I think that when we give them names like resolutions it bears a lot of burden on us because we don't want to fail at them so a lot of times we just um kind of quit within the first like three weeks of january and then we don't set any resolutions altogether so i think that the best way to kind of start a new habit a new chapter in your life is to think of your goals as intentions so when you set an intention the willingness to do the task comes from within. An example of that is if I say I want to lose weight or I need to work out is better, then you're basically telling yourself like, this is something that I have to do today. And the motivation almost seems external, like a thing that is imposed upon you. But if you come at your health for the new year, for example, if that's one of your resolutions, if you come at that from the perspective of, I intend to take care of my health this year, um, and the parameters are not going to be strict, then I think that we would just in general feel a lot better about the whole situation. I think that we're really hard on ourselves for not achieving a certain set of goals. And if we're a little bit less harsh, but come at the perspective of accomplishing something new with the mindset that working a little bit every single day will lead to compound interest at the end of the year we will have some sort of tangible benefit to look back on versus saying like i'm gonna lose weight like, i'm gonna objectively lose like 20 pounds if i say i'm going to intend to take care of my health then every day i'm going to make small changes that help me do that then by the end of the year, I promise you, you will have the results that you want, if not even more. Okay? So, this video is all about productivity. I know people don't like productivity videos because they kind of seem shallow, but productivity isn't a negative thing. It actually can bring you out of deep depressions. It can bring you out of states of lethargy where you feel like you are just in a rut. And if you make a list for yourself to do that day and you don't stick to those things and you just feel bad, if you lied in bed all day and you couldn't get up and you didn't really do anything and then it got dark at 4 p.m., you just feel like pretty shitty. Honestly, it's okay because the last year was very rough for a lot of people um, and there are a lot of hardships that will always happen, which is why we kind of need something to like jolt our system. and. Basically, it's like Newton's first law, you know, an object at rest will stay at rest until an outside force acts upon it. So unless you kind of push yourself and make a plan and then do those things actively, you won't feel like you have the momentum to keep doing more and more. And of course, never be hard on yourself for not accomplishing anything. But just remember that productivity is a good thing and being productive isn't some sort of like kind of buzzword that is like going to fuel capitalism and people are going to like be spending money and like everything is just a business. Like that's not what it is. It's just a simple way to keep you going and like full of life and motivated 
to be wanting to learn more about the things that are you know surrounding you and to be an advocate for yourself and to be environmentally conscious and to to want better for yourself and for your future and even accomplishing like two things in your day will just make you feel like you are adept enough to do more and i feel like that's a really important thing because even accomplishing one task on your list that is meaningful will just give you so much joy and a lot of times we think that just relaxing and like hanging out in bed or on the couch and watching something is kind of food for the soul but what actually gives humans pleasure is accomplishing something working day by day to overcome a problem in a specific project that they're working on then and seeing the fruits of actually consistently working towards that the end goal of that project so anyway this is all a long-winded way to say that productivity is something that we should strive for in 2021. And I have a few ways that I feel like have personally helped me become a productive person. And I want to comment this by saying, like, I don't, you know, wake up at 4 a.m. and then go on a run and then, um, you know, work for eight hours and then come back home and like write three novels. But I do actually have quite a lot of hobbies that I need time for, and unless I plan out how I'm going to approach that day, then I won't actually do anything. So, let's get started. So, my first suggestion is to actually plan every single minute of your day. And I don't think that you need to be strict with the actual scheduling, but the goal of planning every single minute is that you don't have idle time that you can just like waste essentially like you have an allocated time that you are going to say i'm going to relax and do absolutely nothing but if you give yourself too much choice in what to do with your time you will end up doing nothing I promise you, it is just the way that humans operate. We don't do great with a lot of choice. If things are kind of already set for us, it's easier for us to kind of follow that path, you know, road of least resistance. My second suggestion is to use some sort of blocking calendar. So I used to use Google Calendar a lot when I was in college, and that was really great. I quite enjoyed being able to like change the colors of like my classes and like when I would go to the gym and when I would go to the library. Like that was that was really fun. But being on your computer and using Google Calendar on your computer or your phone introduces another set of problems, which is that your internet access kind of fuels maybe like, hey, while I'm also doing my Google Calendar, maybe I'll just like look at some other things on some other tabs. And so I just found that using like an actual notebook like and actually writing out blocking schedules has been really helpful so one of the ways that i like to do this and i actually learned this technique from the book deep work by cal newport which i i think is one of the most life-changing books i've ever read in the modern age and he says that each line should be a different hour so each line is gonna be like 9 10 11 12 13 not 13, 1 p.m., etc. And then you block off sections, lines, like in kind of like little brackets. And so you could say 9 to 11. I just write like a little box around those time, those lines. I would say I'm going to read or something like that. And actually what I put in that time is very specific. Like I'm going to read this and it's not like vague, like answering emails or something like that. It's pretty specific in what I do at this time. And then if something comes up in the day, you, not a problem, there's no need to be so strict with your schedule, but you just reassess the schedule and then make a new one according to how your day goes. So this is particularly useful during a work day when more things are likely to arise, but during the weekends it's also pretty good because I just leave the chunks are a little bit bigger and a little bit more vague because the weekends are meant to be, you know, a little bit more relaxed. But at the same time, you can accomplish so much in the weekend, so I feel like my weekend schedule was a little bit more diverse in what I'm doing as compared to throughout the week. So that is a really, really helpful tool I've learned. And in the book, uh, Deep Work by Cal Newport, he basically says, like, if you are going to be so strict about the schedule, then it won't work for you. The goal isn't to be 
committed and faithful to sticking to the schedule. The goal is to continuously think about how you're using your time. And the kind of faithful commitment that you have towards constantly thinking about your schedule is actually what makes you a more effective worker throughout the day. So if you haven't read Deep Work yet by Cal Newport, I really urge you to because it is a very easy read, but it is incredibly life-changing. And I think that pretty much the ability to work deeply in the modern distracted world is going to be a very increasingly valuable skill that those that can harness will end up prevailing. So just think about it. My third suggestion is to limit social media. And the reason I say this is because it is so easy to waste like hours of your day on social media. When I used to track how much time I would spend on my apps and on my phone, it was alarming. It was like six hours a day, which is ridiculous if you think about it. And of course, this is a metric from the pandemic and I was at home, I didn't, wasn't actually at work, but even then, that's a ridiculous amount of time that I was spending staring at my screen and that's just really not a life that I want to live. And I could be doing literally so many other things, like actually literally anything else. I'd rather sleep than spend six hours staring at my phone. And it's probably gonna like ruin my eyesight if I keep this up. So that is something that I really took to heart when I started looking at my weekly metrics. So I have started to block off time within my blocking calendar of when I won't look at social media. So I try to post content, not consume. I try my best to not scroll or watch annoying videos. I just try to put out what I have creatively thought of out into the world, let it simmer, you know, it's my investment into the world. Um, and I try to limit the amount of time I spend scrolling because I gain nothing by doing that. But if I at least give myself some allotted time to like look at my phone and look at, you know, what people have been saying and whatnot, I feel like I'm still then a, a member of society, which is kind of important to a very social person like myself. So I haven't blocked it out completely. I haven't blocked off like Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. It's just allocated within my schedule. So I have a period of time in the morning where I post if I need to, and then I have a period of time like kind of in the evening night time, depending on the day, of when I can just like scroll and you know mindlessly look at things. And of course, at one point I would love to be able to never scroll, but Right now, that's not really something that I'm capable of doing, so I'd rather just like block in time when I actually like look at things versus just cold, quitting cold turkey. Okay, and my final suggestion is to work out once a day. I think that working out is one of the single biggest motivators to productivity because if you sit at your work desk or if you kind of sit on the couch all day, your willingness to kind of feel motivated to keep going, like go, 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 is just going to slowly dwindle. But if you work out, it's such a big thing in itself to just already work out that when you, after you go on a run, you're basically like, I can tackle anything. I've already done like one of the hardest things that I could have done today, which is to go outside and go on a run. So it's a self-reinforcing habit because you just feel better after you run or after you do any type of exercise. And so then you're more likely to feel empowered to do more things or accomplish something else that day, even if it's one other thing. And I think that's the beautiful thing about exercising and why once you start consistently exercising, you just feel so much better as a person. It was really hard during the pandemic to find ways to exercise. In the beginning, you know, we we're all Chloe Tang all the way, but I think for a lot of us, it kind of just like went downhill from there. So that is something to just really consider in the new year. Like working out isn't supposed to be to lose weight. Of course, that's a nice benefit if that's your goal, but it is really to like give yourself those endorphins so you feel empowered to take on the rest of your day. And I think that's just a really beautiful thing. Like, why wouldn't we do something that kind of just like makes us feel good about ourselves? And I think that's where, you know, circling back to setting intentions comes from. Like, I'm setting an intention to take it upon myself to give myself feelings that make me feel good. And that's something that I'm manifesting for myself, that I want to feel good as much of the time as possible, and I'm going to do things that kind of fuel that. So if like eating cake is going to fuel that, then I'm going to do it. But if I'm eating cake every single day for seven days, 
isn't going to do that, then I'm not going to do that. So it's being less rigid and harsh on yourself, but being really specific with how you're going to spend your time and making sure that the motivation all comes intrinsically and not from like any external sources of how we should look or how we should be spending our day or if, you know, we're accomplishing enough. Like those are all outside metrics that really don't matter. So that's it for today's video. I am so happy that you were all able to make it to the end if you were. And if you found something valuable from this video, please, please let me know. I just want to be able to say things and put out content that actually make people feel like they can tackle their day with resolve and with vigor. That's really my only goal and I hope to post content in the next year that is all related to kind of revitalizing, revitalizing our life after, after the past year, which really, what a, what a year that was. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. Bye.